As Chevy has flat out stated, we've taken the front engine Corvette as far as it can go. The much rumored and highly anticipated mid-engine Corvette is finally here, further cementing its place as the attainable exotic. First off, I haven't had a car attract this much attention in forever. Car people, non-car people, doesn't matter. Everyone knows this is something special. It looks like a race car, and depending on the angle, it could be a Corvette, a Ferrari, a Lambo, or an NSX. But this baby bleeds red, white, and Elkhart Lake blue. And this isn't just the all-new C8 Corvette. This is the convertible with a power retractable hardtop so seamlessly integrated, you wouldn't know this isn't the coupe. Well, that is unless you go looking for the window to the engine, about the only sacrifice you'll have to make for top-down driving. Regardless, this is my first time behind the wheel of the mid-engine Stingray decades in the making, and it has not disappointed. Why does it matter where they stick the engine? It's a simple matter of physics. Shifting the bulk of the car's weight to behind the driver dramatically changes the dynamics. So take whatever experience you've had with older Corvettes and throw it out the window. The days of understeering into a corner and the oversteering out of it are a thing of the past. This vet snakes through every turn with the fluidity of a steel roller coaster, providing the thrill of riding on rails. And with the seats positioned closer to the car's center of gravity, you barely feel the G-forces as you power through a twisty road. This is a more mature Corvette that doesn't flex its muscles until it's go time. With the use of mixed materials, including carbon fiber, this convertible weighs less than 3,500 pounds, and it's backed by GM's familiar 6.2-liter V8, an engine popular in the company's big SUVs. But here, with the optional Z51 performance package, it's tuned to 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque that Chevy claims gives the Stingray Coupe a sub 3 seconds 0 to 60 time. According to the performance data recorder that I didn't realize until afterwards records in 1080p resolution with sound, I've been consistently getting 3.7 seconds while using the launch control feature. Either way, it's seriously fast for a standard Corvette, one that doesn't use turbos or a hybrid powertrain to do the work. And the new 8-speed dual-clutch transmission is seriously good. Smooth like a traditional gearbox, yet smarter and more direct. This isn't a redesign of the Corvette. This is a reinvention. It's a completely different experience than you've ever before had in a Corvette. And the very first thing you'll notice is how docile it is. Sure, it fires up with ferocity if you want it to, but the ride quality is impeccable for a car of this ilk. And in the default tour mode, you can easily be in a Cadillac. It is that refined. Your surroundings are much more premium and complete. The view out the windshield more race car-like. And then when you get to your first curvy road, you will experience the effortless nature that is this new Corvette. It glides through turns like only a mid-engine car can. And that actually has got me to thinking, could this car be too good? There's a visceral attribute you expect in a Corvette that is somewhat lacking here. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but some loyalists might miss it. Even with the performance exhaust, at times I find myself craving even more sound from the driver's seat. It's fairly muted. From outside, however, the crack it emits while upshifting in track mode can rupture an eardrum. A weather mode for times when surfaces are slippery also includes a stealth setting for the pipes. And then a driver configurable Z mode allows for a tailored experience that affects just about everything other than the suspension. If you plan on entering your Corvette convertible into competition or taking it to track days, you're going to need the Z51 package, which includes items like these high-performance brakes and summer-use tires. It does not, however, include the magnetic ride control shocks, which are their own option. But you know what? This car rides so beautifully, you don't even need them. The multitude of performance traction management settings is also absent here as it's bundled with magnetic ride. 
and these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires running 305 wide in the rear are an exceptional fit, balancing a touring ride quality with total performance. This is the most driver-centric cockpit I have ever seen, with all of the controls centered around you, not the least of which is the infotainment system, making it super easy to use. But where does this leave your co-pilot, say? Well, over here in this narrow, confined space without much involvement. This unique layout, completely angled to the driver, is perfect for, well, the driver. Over here, in this long bank of climate control buttons dividing the cabin, might make your better half exclaim, don't ever put baby in a corner. I love the squared off steering wheel, the head up display, the smart climate settings that know when to heat or cool you, and these optional GT2 seats with adjustable everything and exposed carbon fiber. The cabin is a Corvette revolution that no longer feels like an afterthought. The tech is modern with wonderful infotainment. There's a full pantry of electronic safety features, and everything is just super easy to use, like the perfectly placed wireless charge pad. Even the opening animation is brilliantly executed. It's high quality and highly functional. Even the two trunks, if you will, make for smart storage, capable of carrying two sets of golf clubs in the rear and a suitcase up front. But with the engine so close, be careful with what you store back here. My hand sanitizer shot out like hot oil after a ride in this space. As for the convertible experience itself, you sit more enclosed than is typical, and there's a power rear window for more protection, but it still gets a tad turbulent in here, making conversation a little more strained than in other convertibles I've driven lately. You can work the mechanism, though, from the key fob, and it'll go up or down while driving up to a speed of 30 miles per hour. Now more fuel efficient at 19 mpg mixed driving and a crazy good 27 mpg highway thanks in part to the engine's V4 mode, the Stingray convertible starts at about 67,000 and checks in here with the middle 2LT equipment package, Z51 group, Spectra gray wheels, GT2 buckets and red seat belts for 82,680 an inarguable bargain for what amounts to supercar status and performance. When asked, almost everyone has guessed this car to cost about 120000 A couple of notes, there's no front lift system on my car, but there is a camera for just that purpose. The view out the back is almost completely obscured, so this rear view camera mirror comes in handy, though a 360 degree camera would be nice. And at age 48, Getting in and out of this car isn't as easy as it used to be. But unlike some mid-engine cars, the sills here are actually quite narrow, and tall people will have no problem getting comfortable. So nimble, so stable, and so long trip comfortable, this is nothing short of an amazing feat for Chevrolet. Just paint mine, accelerate yellow. For testdrivenow.com, I'm Steve Hammes.